Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to see you. We're looking at following Christ's course and we're looking at witnessing. So let's come before the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace, we thank you for your love, and we thank you for your blessings and encouragement. We acknowledge that you are our God, that you are our Saviour and Lord. We give you the prayers and the glory and the honour. Father, we pray as we read your word now that you bless us and encourage us, Lord, in your name. Amen. Okay, we're going to read uh, John chapter 4, verse 1 to 15, okay? It says, The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? And his disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would give you a living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gives us the well, and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flock and herds. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks the water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become a living water, a living spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. When you become a Christian, you are coming into the presence of God. You are getting to know the living God. You are getting to know the mighty Saviour, the mighty Lord of the world. Oh, you are getting to know God. You are getting to know the joy of God, the wonder of God, the presence of God. And oh, you know the sweetness and the glory and the joy of God in your life. And it's wonderful. But it's no good keeping it to yourself. Let's imagine you had cancer and you were about to die and then they found a cure and the cure, could, it was a pill and that pill, uh, you got it for free and you could get loads of these pills for free and it cured your cancer. You took the pill and it cured your cancer and then you had a bottle of these pills and you knew your family and you knew friends who had cancer, would you just sit at home? Would you sit at home and say, I'm free, I'm happy, and my cancer's healed by this pill. And I've got a big jar of these pills at home. And my family have got cancer and they're dying. And I've got friends at work who are dying. I'm going to sit at home and I'm not going to tell them about these pills. Would you do that? No. You would go and tell them, I got healed by this pill. It can cure your cancer. And you would try to tell them and share the good news of the pill. Well, it's the same with Christ. Christ is bringing living water. He brought living water to the Samaritan woman. And he wanted to know the wells of living water. The wells of God coming in to show refreshing in that person's life. God wants you to share the gospel. Not, not as a law, not to try and button all people, not to try and uh, judge people. But you want them to be happy. You want them to know God. You want them to be happy. I want you to be happy like me <coughs> in God. I want you to know the God, the joy of God in my, in my life. I want you to know Him. And so you share the gospel because you want them to know the happiness that you have in Christ. The joy that you have in Christ. You want them to know this love. This joy. This peace. This hope. Of eternal glory. So you've got to share the gospel. 
Now the way to share the gospel is first of all know that you're saved. You've got to come to that realization that you're saved. You've got to say, Lord, give me an assurance of my salvation. And so look to the gospel. Keep looking until it, it burns in your heart and you know that you are saved. The way to be saved is to look to Christ, to trust in Him and not yourself, not your feelings, not what you think, but trust in Jesus Christ. Look to Him and believe and be saved in Him. When you trust in Him and you lean your all on Him, you will be saved. Okay? And the Holy Spirit will set His seal upon you that you are a child of the Father, a child of the living God, and you will know in your heart that you are and you'll be able to say, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know my God. I know my Savior. I know my Lord. He is alive today. And then you pray and say, Lord, give me an opportunity. Our Lord went to the Samaritan woman. He asked, he asked for some water. She gave some water and then he entered a conversation. Now that's the way into people's lives. You, you say so to someone at, the, at your work, ask them advice about your work. So can you give me some advice about about the work? Can I lend a pen off your desk? And and things like that. And and you get an opening, an opportunity to talk. And when you talk, you can gently share the gospel. And gently lead them to the Lord and show them the Lord. Show them the Saviour who give them new life and new hope. The living water of eternal life from glory. Oh, that you would share that love. You would share the glories to come. And encourage them to come and know the joy of God. Hallelujah. Oh, let's read that again. Let's read it again. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God, who it was that asked for you to drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Our Saviour gives us living water. Oh, the waters of God, the Holy Spirit. It all comes from Christ. The dwelling of God, the dwelling of His peace and joy comes from Christ. Hallelujah, what a Saviour. Hallelujah, what a Saviour. The way to evangelize is to praise Christ. To adore Christ, to worship Christ. And then in Christ, you will begin to bubble over and want to tell people about Jesus. Not button all them, not try to get them in legalism, or try to get them in your religious organization. But to encourage them to come to the waters of Christ. To come to Christ and trust in Him. Oh, oh, what a wonderful thing it is to know God. What a wonderful privilege to know Jesus Christ. Oh, it's wonderful, it's exciting to know Jesus, my friend. Are you discouraged today? Why are you discouraged? I tell you why you're discouraged. Because you're not seeing the living waters in Christ. See the waters of Christ. See the joy of the Holy Spirit. See the presence of the Holy Spirit in Christ he is altogether lovely my friend he said Jason I, I'm not happy I, I don't find peace I don't I don't find why why don't you find peace I tell you why because you're taking your eyes off Christ you're not fixing your eyes upon Christ my friend if you fix your eyes and keep your eyes on Christ and keep them fixed on him all the time the joy of Christ will come to you and will mediate in your heart and will give you a joy and a peace to overflow it. But you've got to start looking to Christ. You've got to start looking to Him. Yes, you have. You've got to look to Him. I know that you're burdened with your family. I know you're burdened. I know that you're burdened and I know yet your pain is pain. And I know whatever it is deep in your heart that brings you down and that hurts you, my friend. I know it. I know it, my friend. <coughs> but I know that my Christ will come. 
And I know that he brings a, do, a new day of refreshing, a new day of joy, a new day of peace, a new day of power. How does it come? It comes by meditating on Christ. It comes meditating on Him. Fixing your eyes upon Him. It says in Colossians that in Him is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Him, He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I am the light of the world. Christ is beyond our understanding. He's beyond the world's understanding. All I know is that when I look to him and fix my eyes upon him, joy comes in my heart. Power comes in my heart. Love comes in my heart from the Messiah, the living God. And that's what you need. So look to Christ. Look to him. Look to him and keep looking to him just as I would look to the sun and keep looking at the sun and it would burn my eyes out look to the sun until it burns the depression burns the loneliness burns whatever's pulling you down look to Christ and let the light of Christ burn the dross that is pulling you down let the light of God shine in you. Keep your eyes on Him. Fix your eyes upon Him. Look to Christ. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. And the day of resurrection is coming in your life. The day of a new dawn, the day of new joy, a new peace, a new hope, of new victory in your life. Yes, it is. It's coming. I can see it coming. I can see the rivers of joy coming in your life. I can see a new hope and a new dawn in your life. I can see it right now. It is coming. It is coming in waves of blessing. But it comes, my friend, when you look to Christ. Don't look to your pastor. Don't look to your wife or your husband. Or to your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Don't look to any leadership. Don't look to the worship service or, or to a book or to a preacher or to a famous teacher. Look to Christ. Don't look to a philosopher or philosophies. Don't look to science. Don't look to men's opinions. Don't look to your family even. Look to Christ, my Lord and your Lord. The altogether lovely one. His name is higher than any other. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is wonderful. His name is Counselor. His name is Prince of Peace, the Mighty God. His name is higher than any other. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is Wonderful. His name is Counselor. His name is Prince of Peace, the Mighty God. You got to bring your eyes off your problem. You got to bring your eyes upon Christ. You got to come out of that valley that has brought you down, that valley that keeps you in despair. And you got to look up to your Lord and your Savior. And you will come out of the valley. Just as Lazarus was in that tomb, and Christ said, Come forth, you will come forth out of that gloom and darkness and the grey clouds will come off and you will see the sun and the light and joy of the day and it comes through Christ through the Lord so come he says to you come to me all you who are weak and heavy laden and I will give you rest 
Take my yoke upon me and let of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Christ says, come. Come to him. Come, come, come to him now. Come and bring your problems to Christ and give them to him. Cast your care upon him. Cast your burden upon him. Savior of the world will carry it for you. Come. He's got a new life for you. He's got a new vision and new hope and new dreams for you. He wants the best for you. His name is Jesus. His name is the Lord. His name is the Savior. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. And he's your Savior today if you will trust him. Oh, come on, trust the Lord now. Come on, move away from this depression. Move away from this discouragement. Move away from the valley of hopelessness. Move away from it. Come on now, move. Get out of it. Move. Move out of the darkness and move into the light. And don't say, Jay, it's impossible for me. My life has been in despair. I've been under attack. I've been in the doom and gloom. I've been knifed in the back. I've been hurt by people. I've been broken by people. Oh, Jay, you don't know how much pain, how much suffering I have gone. I want to tell you something. Christ will lead you through the valley of the shadow of death. He will lead you into joy and peace and hope and victory. He will lead you. It might take a day. It might take a year. It might take ten years. But he is going to lead you through the darkness. He is going to lead you through the valley of the shadow of death. He is going to lead you to hope and victory. You say, I've been broken, Jay. My marriage has been broken. Christ will fix you, fix you and, be and, and, and mend you and help you and give you hope and peace today. He said, Jay, I've been in the valley of depression. Christ will lead you out of it and he'll help you forward. Even if, you, even if it's a, a medical situation where it will never go because you have to take medication, Christ will still help you. He will still comfort you. He will still woo you and give you peace through that, my friend. He will. I just want to, you to be happy. I just want you to be happy. I don't want you to be sad no more. I don't want you to be down no more. I don't want that for you anymore. I want you to be happy. I want you to be joyful. I want you to be victorious. I want you to know God in his peace and joy. It says in the Bible, God is the God of all comfort. God is the God of all comfort. God wants to comfort you, my friend. He wants to comfort you. He wants to comfort you. Maybe you've had someone who you loved, you trusted with all your heart, and they've gone and left you. And right now you've got a tear down your eye because they have left you. I want to tell you this, God loves you. God ain't going to leave you. The Savior ain't going to leave you. Though it's brokenness in your heart, and you feel lonely, and you feel bereft. Though it be sorrowful in the morning, God's joy is going to rise up during the day in your life. God is a God of mercy and of comfort. He says the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace. God wants to put his love in your life. He wants to put his peace in your life. And he wants to put joy in your life. Come out of that prison, my friend. You're in a prison. I don't want you to be in a prison no more. You're in a prison. A prison of negativity. It's negative, negative, negative. Negative, negative, negative. There's nothing good in my life. Nothing ever, nothing good ever happens in my life. It, it's all negative, negative, negative. They're after me. They're trying to destroy me. I've got too many enemies and it's negative and it's negative and it's negative. And I don't want you to live in negativity. I want you to live in Christ. I want you to know the joy of God. And that His joy and pleasures evermore in Him, our God and Savior Jesus Christ. That is joy unspeakable and full of glory. There is a peace. 
that passeth all understanding. And his name is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, am I encouraging you today? Am I getting you to see? It's time to get out of the valley and into the light. Oh, if I've just done that to one person today, I'll be very, very glad. Get out of that valley. Did you hear it? Come on. Get out of the valley. 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 Don't live in the valley anymore. Don't live in the valley anymore. Don't live in the valley anymore. Stop. with the Lord's people when you can study the word of God with men of God men who are mighty in the word study under them go to them go to them and hear what God is saying through them study the word of God with men of God and with the people of God hear what the people of God have to say when they read the word of God. Fellowship with God's people. Read the word. Serve the Lord. Get out of the valley. Get out of the valley. Get out of the valley. Of the shadow of darkness. Get out. And you get out. Hallelujah, what a saviour. Let's pray. It's good to be a Christian, my friends. We have a hope that we're not ashamed of. And his name is Jesus. Let's come before Almighty God. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for the gift of this day. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Oh God, we thank you for the joy that you have given us in Christ. We thank you that you died at Calvary for us, Lord, and shed your blood for our sin. We thank you for this new day, and we thank you for the goodness and love of thy presence. Oh God, I pray for the dear souls that have heard your word today. Lord, I pray, help them out of the valley and into the light of your presence. Bless them today with your love, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, pour out on them thy Holy Spirit. And may they be blessed in you, Lord, and for your glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you going to come out of the valley now? Come here, let me give you a big hug. Give you a hug. All right. You're loved, my friend. <clears throat> I don't care who you are. You're loved. And this is my hope to you, all right? Now you get up. And you get moving out of that valley. And you enjoy your life in Christ. Okay? It's not going to be easy. It's going to be battles. It's going to be difficulties. But you're on a new matrix. And the matrix is him. The saviour. All right? Take care, and uh, God bless you, and uh, love to everybody out there. Those who are pastors and preachers, I've got one bit of advice to you. Keep preaching. Keep preaching.